Good afternoon. Long time no see. Hope everybody's doing well. I am out for a little forage in Edale and it is, well it was a beautiful day in Sheffield when I left um, and now I've got up into the high peaks. It is a little overcast but it's still pretty nice. There's no threat of rain and the air's quite still so I think we're going to have a nice little peruse around the fields today see what we can find and I'm hoping to find lots of wax caps maybe some psilocybes but first up we're just going to take a little wander through these fields Oh my gosh, look at the size of these wax cups that I've just found down here. This is a meadow wax cup and it is a right monster. Meadow wax cups are actually the largest and most common of the wax cups and these are edible tea. They are absolutely stunning and proper chunky little guys sometimes. Um, but this is where I am at the moment and they really, really loved. Hang on, let me turn you around and show you. So there's another one just down here. And these guys really love undisturbed grasslands, ancient grasslands. Grasslands that haven't had any fertilizers added for a long, long time and have got minimal to light grazing. So not too many nutrients is added from the animal poo. So this habitat is shrinking, which means that wax cups aren't as abundant as what they should be or used to be. But luckily, this field seems to have perfect conditions because there's an absolute abundance of all sorts of wax caps. There's more meadow wax, meadow wax caps down here. So here I've got another meadow wax cap. And these are just so beautiful. Look at them. There's just so many here. And actually, can you see just down there, there's more. I think that's an old parrot wax cap down there. There's some more meadows here, tucked under. <laughs> There's just so many in this place here. There are loads of parrots on this field and this is probably everybody's favourite wax cap. And that's because it's got these beautiful, beautiful colours that kind of range from green to yellow to blue to red. And it's really, really easily identified by its kind of sticky texture. So if you're ever unsure, you can kind of give it a little, um, a little touch and if you feel sticky or tacky and it's got these beautiful colours, then it's probably going to be the parrot wax cap. These are edible and they do grow in pretty big numbers sometimes so um, if you do come across a big patch then you can give them a try but they have got a very, very slimy texture. These little orange ones down here are the honey wax caps and even though the colour is not really a reliable feature it can be very variable from all shades of yellow through to red but the scent is a dead giveaway because it's got this really sweet honey like aroma and when crushed or rubbed it's much much stronger but this is the honey wax cap. It's an edible mushroom but I don't find these as much as some of the other wax caps so I tend to leave these um, but they are really really cool. So these little cherry ones down here are golden wax caps and these are a really really pretty yellow wax cap um, they're quite common and they've got these adnex gills which means that they're just touching the stem so it's a good way to tell the difference between these and the butter wax caps or the oily wax caps. This is, oh gosh, the wind is very, very windy up here. This is a snowy wax cap, and these are also edible. I'm going to leave this one here because my basket is already full, or well, my bag is already full of wax caps. So I actually feature meadow wax caps in my book, The Forager's Almanac, which was published last month. Well, actually, it's the 1st of November now. Uh, it was published on the 26th of September. Snow wax caps and meadow wax caps are featured in that, and they're late autumn, early winter mushrooms, so really, really great ones to find when some of the other mushroom species are dying back for winter. I'm going to keep walking because I'm really hoping to find some ballerina wax caps, which are a really beautiful pink wax cap, which are quite rare. So fingers crossed we find some of them today. 
It's not been a particularly good year for Libby cats, but they still thrive up here in these rich undisturbed soils, um, especially in these lightly grazed fields. All of this grazing helps to keep the plants low and it prevents scrub from taking over. And um, without def um, dense scrub, there's much more sunlight and space for Libby cats to flourish. And um, all of this creates an ideal environment where they can break down the organic material and return all these nutrients back into the soil. And in turn, these nutrients fuel all the grasses and sedges and plants around them, especially in these harsh harsher seasons where nutrients are pretty scarce. I don't think it's picking up just how bright red these mushrooms are on my phone but this is the scarlet wax cap and this is a gorgeous gorgeous red wax cap that are quite common um, they start off this really deep scarlet color but they can fade to kind of orangey tones um, they can be confused with the crimson wax cap but the crimson wax cap tends to be a lot larger and it's got a paler flesh as well whereas the scarlet wax cap has got a red flesh view behind me is just incredible isn't it <laughs> it's nice to be back out filming a foraging walk I haven't seen you for quite some time um, I've been out foraging and walking just as much as I I ever do but um, I just have had zero time to sit down and edit over the past few months so I haven't even bothered trying to film anything because I knew that I wouldn't have time to edit it. So I've not long been back from two weeks away. I've been working at my retreats in Norfolk for the past couple of weeks and it was really, really good. It was, um, it was really good actually, it was lovely. We had so many really lovely guests come along and some really cool workshop hosts as well and it was just a really jolly time. We got to hang out in the woods, go for long walks, go foraging, go skateboarding and uh, learn lots of new crafts and skills and stuff. So yeah, it was a really, really fun time away. Um, I'm always so busy when I'm there, I can never really properly partake in everything um, and it's a bit of a shame because we had some really cool stuff going on this year but um, yeah, I've always got duties and jobs to be doing, um, errands to run and, and people wondering where I am all the time so yeah, I don't really get too much time to myself when I'm there but it is, oh, wow, oh my gosh, the size of this gunner, let me show you, this is in somebody's... Um, Pop it so I can't, oh, I think I can go in. The gate's open. I don't think I'm allowed in here. The size of this gun. Oh my God, there's somebody's house there, so I'm not gonna walk too far up. I don't want them to shout at me from the bedroom window. <laughs> so I'm just gonna carry on with my walk. Um, but yeah, I don't think I've got long today. Um, maybe about another half an hour before I've got to get back to the car. And I'm slightly concerned as well because um, this is, this is a pretty long, oh gosh. This is a pretty long journey for me to take on my own. I drove here and um, if you've been following me for a while, you'll know that I only learnt to drive um, in June. So I'm very, very new to it and still pretty scared. And this is about 40 minutes away to get to the high peaks up in Edale. So um, I did drive to Norfolk from Sheffield, which was two and a half to three hours, but I was following Chris. So it felt a little bit easy. You know, I didn't really have to think about which lane I needed to be in or anything like that. So, oh God, I'm so out of breath. So um, yeah, this is quite a, fairly long drive for me and I'm just a bit concerned because I don't get any signal here whatsoever like zero reception at all and my maps isn't showing the route home so I think I've just got to wing it for like the first 10 minutes or however long until I manage to get some reception and I can find out where the hell I am but yeah I'm, I'm a little bit nervous so I think I actually might call my walk off a little bit earlier just to make sure I don't get caught out in the dark at all because um yeah, the nights are drawing in now. It was uh, Selwyn yesterday. And, um, wow, what's this? Oh, a little snack box. That's nice. Look. I don't get to see the maidenhair tree very often because it's not a wild tree, um, but this is just grown in somebody's garden. It has these beautiful, beautiful fan-shaped leaves that in a couple of weeks' time will turn a lovely yellow colour. I love to make teas with these. They're really, really great for memory and focus. This is also a really cool tree because it's super resilient. It is one of the oldest trees on Earth. It was here when the dinosaurs were walking on the planet, and also it is one of the only trees that survived the Hiroshima explosion. Oh, 
now look what we got down here. Just at the edge of an allotment site in some wood chip. These are psilocybe cyanescence or wavy caps. And these are a hallucinogenic mushroom. And I've actually got quite a lot of these growing in my allotment. Um, they've just sprung up again this year. Uh, a week later, uh, sorry, a month later than what they usually are. But yeah, these are wavy cap mushrooms and they're pretty interesting little psilocybe. When you see mushrooms on top of logs like this, it usually means that the squirrel's taken them up here and used it as a little dinner table. <laughs> I love seeing little squirrel dinner tables. What have we got over here? We've got some grey oysters over here. Absolutely perfect. Hang on, I can't film and pick these. I'm going to have to put you down. Right, I couldn't cut and film. But this is my little oyster hall. Some little grey oyster mushrooms. Beautiful.